This is my uh, 2002 Piaggio Liberty 50 that's under there, two stroke. And uh, this is one that I got uh, recently. I had some parts on it that I want to put on there. So some of these bits and pieces right here, and we're going to change over hopefully uh, these parts here, uh, including uh, front forks and fender and stuff, uh, and hopefully get them on there today. Okay, it's simple to uh, just remove the floor plate here. You need to take out the little rubber inserts here on line one and, well, just the two outside lines. Um, and then you have, obviously, uh, two on side here that we want to take out, and two just right here. And then the little foot stoppers here, um, which, connecting through there. I, I, I'm only doing this because I need to change the foot plate here, uh, but otherwise you wouldn't need to do this for these other jobs we're talking about. I just thought I'd stop by and say how to do that. We take this bit off and take the other one off on that side. Uh, and then the plate, uh, which interlocks me, I have to take this part off as well. Uh, and then this interlocks through there, if I remember rightly. Uh, play it by ear. Two screws out of the bottom. Through here. I'm going to get the front plate off here, two screws there, there and there. Okay. Basically just on clips, be careful there, it's just got little tabs there, screws on the inside there, and uh, hopefully then part of this main front face here should start to come loose. I'll take a look at where that's fixed now. So lift this out now that all the screws are away. Uh, right, and there we have two more screws there that will fix this front bodywork on. Uh, okay, so now we should be able to pull this out I've got a couple of broken bits on my floor plate here, which has always annoyed me. Anyway, basically, we just pull this back and it will loosen up there. It uh, interlocks here, so I have to just move the front forward a little bit. Got the sides of that. And then it will drop out. Like that. Keep that safe on the other side. Just turn a little bit of one of those... So I'm gonna just start disconnecting lights and stuff on this front bodywork. Um, it's gonna be a while yet before this is free and you can't get this free uh, until you drop the front forks and stuff. So uh, fair enough, but for now, I'm just gonna start pulling it apart. Okay, just got a block in the middle of the room. And uh, I'll lift this up onto there. So we need these forks just to be Elevated. Bring that block back underneath, stop it rocking. And the bike is now sort of suspended up there and the wheels off the ground so that we can drop this front section. Now, pain in the neck. In order to get this these front forks out and the, the, the fender and everything, we have to disconnect the handlebars, which of course contains all the cabling, the braking system, wiring loops, all this stuff, the speedo cable, everything else. I've already taken the front uh, console instrument panel, everything off, obviously. Uh, sorry, I haven't got a tutorial on that, but I can show you how to put it back on. Okay, so we start with this. Uh, this bolt that goes through the, uh, from the handlebar mount um, onto the front fork stem, that's gonna be real tight. So just bear that one in mind. You need a spanner on both ends. So you've got a little plastic cap there. You've got to take off of this, not on this side and then uh, hold on to both of them, turn them in opposite directions, and be careful of your knuckles. I'm gonna spray the, both of these ends here to just loosen them up a little bit, and then um, one size uh, wrench on this side, side, the one on this side, turn them in opposite directions. So as expected, real, uh, took a real good, uh, real good cranking on those, uh, on these uh, adjustable, wrench, on these wrenches here to get these undone, but sure enough it will, and then you'll have to knock the 
pin through and then we're going to have to work on this little opening here just to gently prise it open because it does slightly interlock with a slot on the stem here which yeah so that's a bit tricky but you can do it okay now the bolt's out believe it or not i'm going to give this a bit of a knock with a hammer on all sides to loosen it up because the rust will have just sealed that join there between that so don't smack the life out of it just give it a decent thing make sure you don't make sure you don't hit your cabling if you're going to keep that on um, make sure you don't bend anything or whatever but just be careful but give it a tap all the way around till it starts to loosen up sure enough that's coming up see that now remember i mentioned you might need to just prise that little bit apart so a large uh flathead screwdriver just to oh hello little friendly spider disrupted his home life um might just need to prise that open just a tiny bit and we can always shut it again afterwards when we need to put the bolt back through okay so that's as far up as it will come uh, i think it's a safety device you can see this hole right here in the front of the fork stem if you can see that we're a little close there i had neglected to disconnect the brakes here which i do need to do uh, because i'm going to take the piping from this other fork stem that i'm using um, and I'm going to change it out and hook it up to my master cylinder here. So I'm um, going to get this off. These are also usually very tight, so a little bit of spray on there and then watch the knuckles. Okay, now I'm done. Now once you start undoing it with your finger, just bear in mind that um, unless you've got no brake fluid in there, you're going to leak brake fluid out through this connector here. So be ready to sort of catch that whatever however you're going to deal with it as you see uh, right there leaking out as we speak okay keep all your parts make sure you don't lose any of these bits here so i just i like to just pop them back in if there's a um, if there's a bolt or something that disconnects then just stick it back in the hole it came out of another spider maybe it's the same one just pop that into there, ready for the next one. And then that frees up this pipe here, which you're going to need to free up because it goes down through the forks here, through the through the bodywork, I should say. So there we have that pipe ready to sort of take through there. The only other thing that goes through the uh, front fender is the uh, Speedo cable, which comes up here and that would have connected into your instrument panel originally. And that should be able to just be push down and through and it should fit through that hole I think I guess I guess we'll find out in due course uh, I need to do now a little bit of this and we're just gonna squeeze that in there just to prise it apart a little bit and then the once I've given it enough the handlebars will pop off and I've just prized that open enough now just to get it it's quite loose and then it will eventually yeah there we go get to the point where it will just lift off uh, that's the hole in the front that I mentioned. It's the slot in the back that I mentioned. And the next job is to get these rings out to drop the forks out. So I'm going to carefully work out how to just suspend these handlebars. Uh, it should be okay actually just holding there for now because there's quite a lot on it. Uh, I'm going to take the front wheel off first. Uh, disconnect the, the brake system there. And disconnect the speedo there. Uh, what this will do is you need to again... Uh, uh, have a socket on both sides, um, but only one of them I will actually undo, which should be, uh, well, I'm not sure which one it's going to be actually, it's probably this one, but either way, it's one-sided, so once you get one off, the other one will stay tight and you have to knock the pin uh, through the through the, the wheel, through the hub, uh, to get it free. Mega stiff, as you would expect, but um, it's now come loose. Uh, so once I'm turning this with a spanner on the other side um, Then it'll come loose and there's a ring in here like a I don't know what you might call that Like a separating wing uh, ring and once we've got that off then we're gonna knock the pin through show in a sec um, Have the nut off on this side now interestingly the bike that I took these forks off um, the thread was at this end and we had to bang it through and in this case It's at this end. So we'll bang it through this way. Um, so we're going to get a, think a hammer and a large uh, Allen key or a, a very flat ended Phillips um, screwdriver, something like that. And we're going to bang it through uh, to pop it out, which will release the wheel. Once we start to tap it, it's 
start going through and we get to a point there where we need to change um, to using something like this uh, on there um, or a, you know, a, a Allen key of some kind, then we'll knock the pin through. You can see it's started to pop out on this side. The wheel just drops out like that. The disc drops out of the braking system there. And you will still have your speedo uh, connected here. So just need to take some care with that for a moment. It has a little locator there in the side of the wheel, as you see. And one was a little bit stiff and then it just pops off. You have a little fiber washer here. Make sure you take care of that. You can see there it is. And that forms a seal on there where this little o-ring is and and so it goes there we go i'm just going to pop that aside for now i'm actually going to take the tire off of this uh, wheel and put it on one of the ones that came off the other bike over there because that tires had it meanwhile this is the pin that came out uh, from uh, the forks here so i'm just going to advise you to put that little spacer ring uh, on there and the nut off the other side and keep those together uh, along with the wheel make sure you don't lose them uh, okay just spotted that um my brakes here uh these ones that you can see they're brake pads and the one that i took it off doesn't have any brake pads on it and since i don't fancy trying to learn how to change brake pads on this thing i'm gonna reuse the braking system off here and it still has to come off by taking these uh, allen key bolts out because um we're going to take the forks away, obviously, and we want to work on that. Real stiff again. Seems like everything on my bike is just a little bit seized very often, and that's because it spent half its life outside, I think. And um, when I got it, it was in quite a bad shape. So a lot of stuff a little bit hard to get off, these included. So I'm going to make sure that, again, a little bit of oil in there. Pop that in there, and then I'm going to use a lever, probably a, a garage. You know, they're going to have a nice, long... Uh, Allen key sort of arm thing. I don't have that, but this will do it. Big bummer. Um, turning the top on was even tighter and it's actually, it's sheared off. And that'll be jammed in there forever, which is not only a pain from the fact that I'm gonna have to work out now how to do these brake pads, but it means that I can't sell this unit either, which I might've got a few quid for secondhand. So this little cover comes off. Let me find a pin that goes through the brake pads, which has one of these little horrible little pins on it, which are probably one use only, but we'll see how it goes and see if we can get that out and change the pads into that unit. Okay, took that little uh, ring thing off the end of there and couldn't work it out initially, but basically you've got to tap that with a hammer or you just pull it out. Again, very gently. I tried grabbing it here with the other side and pulling it through, it wouldn't move. So I've had to tap it with a hammer and now that I'm doing that, it's moving through and then the brake pads sit on that ring. Okay, I've had to put the, take the brakes off and put them in this vise here to be able to knock that pin down further. Got to keep it still to knock it through. Okay, won't go into all the details as to how, but um, I have managed to take the pads out of uh, one of the brake sets uh, and put them into the other one. Um, that's really a tutorial all of itself, really, but on one of these brake units, I had this pin here that the, that the pads hang on uh, was completely seized into there. So I had to take these bolts out separate the two halves and get it out that way on this one i've got these bolts seized so i can't open it up but i found that the middle pin would move quite easily once i got that little uh, uh, 
that little uh, locking ring thingy, um, I forget what they're called, uh, out and we could replace them, gave them a bit of a clean inside of there. Uh, had to um, pull the, I don't know what these things are called, there's two, two round discs in here that under the power of the brake fluid will pop out and press the pads onto the disc. Um, so I to push those out, that squirted a load of brake fluid out all over the place as you'd expect. Um, but that now is ready to be fixed back onto those forks right there, uh, ready to take the disc when I mount that back on once I've got the tire changed. Put that there, there's a little cover there. That clips in place like that. And then I'm gonna put these bolts back in to secure it in place uh, on the forks here. Okay, I can get to the point here now where we start to loosen up all of this lot. I'm gonna spray it up again. It can help a little bit sometimes, leave it for 10 minutes, just help it to loosen up and clean the thing up. Now, I'm betting that there's a specific tool now for this to go in these slots right here. I don't have one, so I'm gonna improvise there with um, a big flathead screwdriver and a gentle tapping of the hammer to loosen that up. If we're going to do that, we need to make sure we don't break anything, so careful there. Okay, so we're going to try and take this ring off. So I'm just going to put a large flat head on here and just don't hit it too hard. And there it starts to move. Once it starts to move, I go with another one on the other side. That's just so I'm not always hitting the same slot and end up damaging it. go. First ring comes off. I think there's a loose ring that follows second, if I remember rightly. Uh, yeah, it's like an interlocking thing with a locator on it, I believe. Yeah, if you can see that from where you are. A little locator tab on there. I'm going to put these in the order they come off. Keep a track on it. Third one as well is just finger tight actually on the on the bearings there. As we start to loosen that, the the forks are starting to fall under their own weight, so I'm gonna loosen that but hold on to these. Dropped it to the floor now, and I'm just going to free up the, the uh, speedo cable here. Where is it? There. Um, and hopefully that's going to pass through that little hole there. And annoying. It will not go through the hole. So now I've got to look at what you've got to do to disconnect it at this end. It's well, quite a simple answer to that one. Just got to loosen that ring there that keeps coming undone and then it's just one of these sort of square pole thingies that turns the thing in the side of there so that's good that will now pass back up through this hole that's it popped out through there and all of that because we just want to change this fender crazy isn't it really it's ridiculous you have to drop everything out of here just to change that but there we go so now we're going to take the forks out, the rest of this, and we're going to replace them with those forks. I'll give them an inspection first, make sure they look in good condition or same condition at least as these. Go from there. So pull these out now. A little bit of bodywork falling on me, but it's just a bit of plastic. So good there. And there we are. And then we can also remove this front, I don't know what that's called, pannier or something. And uh, these are our old forks out. Success. All right, so I'm gonna give this a bit of a wire brush and clean it up a little bit. As you can see, it needs that. It's not rotten or anything, it's just a bit of rust. Um, and then I'm gonna put some um, direct to rust hammerite paint on that and uh, leave it to dry, have some lunch. Alrighty, um, so painted up um, most of the chassis here. 
uh, was it completely necessary certainly not um, but it does look a lot better it makes me feel a lot better for sure <laughs> it does give it some protection as well then uh, from further rusting uh, so now we're at the point where we're going to need to put this new set of forks on so just been cleaning down inside here there's a lot of cobwebs and leaves and all sorts of stuff taking that bearing ring out it was very sticky the balls hardly moved at all re-greased that doesn't look very great on the camera but it's um it's nice and it's it's nice and loose now and fluid so um that's that's going to be working much better and uh, nice and free going to give this a good clean up and so on and then start to put it back on there okay uh, about to uh, offer up these uh, forks up into here it's a bit tricky with one hand and i certainly don't think i'll be able to film it at the same time gotta fit the ring on the top while i'm holding the bottom of it there i'll do my best Okay, we've got these um, rings here that have got to go in a particular order as before. So uh, this one that has this sort of beveled inside here that will match up with the bearings on here that will go in first, uh, followed by these two here that have these, uh, has a little locator lug on this ring right here. Um, and the last one to go in is the one that has these four little slots in it um, on either uh, on that go right the way through the unit. As I've already said, giving everything a good grease. So when we pop it up through here in a second, we won't need to worry about whether things fit properly. Need a little dab of light oil on the thread here of the. Tighten this all the way down, finger tight for now. Keep pushing up with the forks so it's easy to turn the ring. And once you know that you're all the way down, you can take your, take the pressure off the forks. A little bit further up close, we're just turning that one with our hand, oil the thread there, whilst pushing up on the forks to get the weight up. Um, into that position there. Okay, then we go for this ring right here, which, as I've already mentioned, has a, a little locator lug thing on it here. And this is to get the forks um, in the right position, well, the rings, I should say, in the right position, and it locks them locks that right there okay and finally this one right here and again I'm just gonna finger tighten that one for now and I'm gonna just give a little tap with this bottom ring with my screwdriver again into there just while these ones here are still loose uh, and then we'll tap this one closed as well, quite tight that one, with the uh, screwdriver as well. Just giving this bottom one a little tap in just to make it a little tighter. Coming to this one, this will take more. I'm going to keep the forks straight, uh, or keep them still I should say, while I do this. Just get it nice and tight this, because I remember how tight it was coming off. As far as I know there's no torque setting, I mean there's theoretically a torque setting for everything, but this just needs to be nice and tight so it's not just about that ring the handlebar itself will keep it in place you can see that's moving beautifully and freely but there's no way i could undo that with my fingers one more tap that should do okay and then next is to just get these back into the right position the handlebars and see if we can drop all of this on there as well at the same time. So it does that. Now I want to just be sure I don't have to get anything too particular here with the running of some of these cables and junk. Um, hmm. 
not entirely sure of what route this brake pipe took before, but I will I'll work that out. In a second, I'll look back at my video and photos of before it all came apart, and I will get the right orientation of this on here and the right route through there. But as it happened, all this other stuff is really quite free. Okay, so I've got that into position. I had, did have a look back through to see what what route the uh, brake lever takes. Importantly here now, we're gonna stick this bolt back in. Remember this one that um, undoes on one side, a little cap thing like that slides all the way through. We you get two socket uh, wrenches here uh, on nuts at the same time. That pin uh, that you put in uh, fits into the slot that's cut out of the forks post. So it's actually borderline impossible to get the location wrong of this because the pin will not slide through unless you put it into that little uh, slot. I don't know if that makes sense. If you remember the forks post comes up like that, but it has a like a hole cut in the middle. Well, the bolt as it goes through left to right sits in that little hole, which is what locates it. Uh, and that in itself as well will determine actually the right orientation uh, of the handlebars to the wheel. So we'll tighten that up now real tight. Super tight in there now. Um, let's pop your socket off. Yeah, I think that's to protect this wiring loom. I don't know, maybe it's not. But the wiring loom goes right next to that and maybe that stops the thing from chafing. Okay, um, that's the brake pipe reattached there. FYI, two washers, one on this side one on that side and then there's just down here you probably won't be able to see it i was talking to you about the location of the pipe actually i looked at which route the pipe takes but then also the angle of this uh, u-bend here not a u-bend is it probably a j-bend i don't know what's called uh, down inside there there's a little lug that this thing sits on but as you tighten that up it's set, effectively this can only f actually sit in one place um because of that little lug it, it it puts a stop on that from moving and now uh, we tighten that up again wicked tight on this one because it's brake system may it be nice and tight oh, a monumental mistake here after getting the forks and everything in and then stupidly turned around and realized i had not put the pannier on how dumb so i've disconnected uh, um yeah taking everything apart again i have to disconnect the brakes the rings the handlebars everything don't make the same mistake i did now those two black things, those rubber things go in through that hole right there and you can see how it basically all goes together. So now we're going to offer up the forks again and for now this pannier stays kind of flopping about like mad for a while. Then I'll have to refix the top of the forks there, the stem and the brakes and put the handlebars back on. Let's do it. Okay, stupid me has reconstructed it all again then. I should have said at the very beginning you need to just maybe take photos or whatever of which way your cables and stuff go through here because most of this goes up behind um, but there are some bits that go in front and whatever and so it might be different on your bike to mine too I don't know but um anyway that's the basics of it there this still hasn't been fixed into place yet we do that uh, down here uh, at the feet a little bit later on I want to make sure that everything else is good first before I do that okay uh, brake system uh, put back on and tightened up everything in its place and um, there's our brake pads uh, ready to go so this is just waiting for a wheel now because uh, I've got to change over that wheel as I mentioned before change the tire over um, so we're up to this sort of state of things now still no bolts and stuff in here I'm going to start working on these handlebars and getting some other bits back together well today's first priority have some tea uh, if you're not used to taking a break with these things try and do it Okay, we've been doing a little, a few little other bits and pieces on this today. Um, the main thing I've been doing today is um, this carb here. Um, I made the mistake of uh, leaving my battery just perched on here while I had it par um, parked, because of course you take all of this stuff off when you've got to get into all of this. And then forgot it was there under my bike cover, wound the, uh, pu uh, pulled the bike backwards, the battery fell off, landed right on top of the choke there and smashed it off and that's another 25 quid or so thankfully i found one that was 
new old stock. Um, so it's 25 pound delivered instead of around about 90 quid if you buy the original stuff. But anyway, that's been reinstalled. Um, I've also uh, taken a part off of the, the Weber carb that was on the other Paggio that was that I bought uh, from London there and adapted this. It was it was wasn't exactly the right thread, but it was close enough. So it got two or three threads in and then it jammed. So it was too far back so hacksawed it uh, down and so it's just sit there it just sits there it's not really adjustable anymore but it does mean that my throttle cable now securely fits into that slot whereas before it didn't do that it was just sort of it had, it had lost that end uh, i don't know what the previous owner did or whatever but um what i did in the meantime as well was to change this accelerator cable uh there's a pair they come as a pair if you want to buy them as a pair and they go through this rather annoying little thing here and, and, and it splits and one of them is terminated in one way, one is terminated, another one go into that just right now. But then one goes off to the carburetor, the other one uh, goes to the oil pump down here. So you can see as I turn that as a cable, it goes on there and that one comes out of there. Leads me to this. That was also broken on mine, this, this tensioner, this little adjuster. Um, not quite sure how, but that was broken from previous owner as well. So this was kind of flopping around. Couldn't make an adjustment if I needed, you know, to adjust the mixture, I guess, of the oil on the two stroke. So took this off the uh, other Paggio that I bought from London. Thankfully that was still in place and in great condition. Um, I had a broken off bolt though, that was, <laughs> that was still screwed into, to, to my, uh, engine cover here and I was like I'm never going to get that off because surely whenever it was turned if it was enough to tear the metal then that thread will be completely stuck and what was really odd was that I just got myself a screwdriver in the end of it that just about fitted uh, into the bolt that was broken off started to turn it thinking this is never going to work and it just turned and came straight back out so I'm not sure how that got broken it may have been smacked against or something rather than actually being seized but that meant i could put a new one of those in once i put the new cable in here as well and that and the the, the little double joiner thing here a little bit of a head job to work out how to get it all apart um and in the right order and you have to connect it up in the right order too so that the cables are long enough to terminate at both ends but it's done now so feeling really good about that install my new choke um, which also goes inside this sheath here that takes a bunch of other cables down underneath the air inlet you might be able to just about see it there and then it's pretty tight and then it splits and takes some cables off into the engine and some to the choke and whatever else and i'm like i'm no way gonna be able to feed that through but it but i did um little technique here was that uh where are we can you even see where we are um, this cable that comes out of the choke here i snipped off the old one and then attached this end of the new one uh, to that cable that i'd snipped off uh, with insulation tape tight as i could and then sprayed it all up with oil in the hope that it would then when we pulled it through that it would find its way through this sheath which was very tightly packed already pulled it through a little bit of resistance and then brilliant work work like a dream it just slid all the way through which means it's in this protective sheath bring it out hook up the new choke and there we are so bolt out of here and so on meantime then i've uh, tidied up all of this lot as well that uh, there's quite a lot going on down through here uh, none of these were cable tied to anything so just um got those nicely anchored making sure they're not too tight they they look really tight but actually there's still a little bit of slack in all of them to be able to move a little bit also making sure that we're not anchoring any cables that will move up and down when when the bike's running because of course this shock here means that what we're sitting on here on bumpy roads is moving up and down and what we don't want then is movement going on here that starts to chafe cables and so on so making sure that it's only stuff that's uh, really uh, anchored and uh, doesn't move around a whole lot because otherwise we put a cable tie on there and if the cable's waggling around like crazy the cable tie will start to damage it and so on so anyway relayed all of that so it's nice and secure now and out of the way of all of the bodywork um, I've done a check on the fuel system there's another thing that was wrong with this and that was that the fuel gauge didn't work oh gosh I spent hours on this trying to work out why um, Eventually I've discovered that there was either a problem with the circuit board here, 
um, some of the components, maybe one of these or something. All the tracks, I checked all of those for continuity, nothing wrong with them. All the cables coming into these connectors, all good and showing continuity to the other end. This end, uh, uh, this end all checked, that end all checked. Um, and also the fuel gauge itself, the fuel level meter here, that lives inside of that, also checked for uh, resistance and the ohmage all seemed good and everything else. So I couldn't work out why it wasn't working. Only thing that was left was that there's maybe a component gone here, perhaps that resistor, or um, the actual fuel, um, uh, what do you call it, gauge itself, the actual coil there, the, the electrical coil. So got myself another one of these, found one of these uh, on the net. Normally you'll pay a good sort of 35, 40 quid for the instrument panel. This one's quite old. And, and, and actually has some damage and it had to have a bridge cable uh, resoldered into it. You can see it's not in great condition, but I offered the guy 15 quid from 35 and he took it. So um, uh, tried it out then, plugged my cabling into this new panel and straight away the fuel gauge just rocketed off, which was absolutely brilliant news. So I've still yet to work out what it is. It's probably the fuel gauge, so I'm gonna change, the first thing I'm gonna do is change this fuel gauge out into this unit. Um, and if that doesn't work, um, then we know that there's a problem with the circuit board here. And at that point, I have to start patching together this rather terrible looking um, circuit, flexible circuit board here and um, working out where the issue is. Uh, or perhaps just swapping over that resistor to this one. I think that is part of it, if I remember rightly, with my limited knowledge of electronics. Anyway, quite a long way to go yet. Uh, next job on this, I do have my uh, new wheel. I should say my new, well, my, my new wheel with the tire ready to go on it. So um, this will be changed over today. Had the tire from my original bike changed onto the wheel of the new bike because the wheel's in much better condition and this tire is better than the one that was on it. So um, that's to be done as well, I think, today. And then once we've got the front wheel on there, I'll be able to probably rock the bike forward this time and take the back wheel up. And we will change the back wheel uh, today for the better one and go from there. So uh, here's my newly changed tire on this much better condition wheel. Uh, than the other one that I had over there. Uh, expertly changed uh, by one of my Facebook friends, but that I didn't realize works at the garage that I use. So this is Ricky Jower who changed this over for me yesterday uh, from Born Speed in Boscombe. Great bunch of guys there and just met Ricky yesterday. Great fella. And thank you for changing this over. I just want to say, right, this may sound kind of a bit out there, a bit extreme, I don't think it is. Gosh, how much of our safety do we owe to guys who do their job well? You don't do this right, then I'm coming off, right? You don't do this well, my life is in danger. And potentially someone else on the back of this with me. So thanks, Ricky, thanks for taking your job seriously and doing a good job, bro, plus you're a great guy. Just before I start to just offer this up, put it back in, I'm gonna do some cleaning up. This bike was standing for a while and these little, areas here you can't even see them when the wheel is on and they just get you know caked up in all of this so i'm going to take this wildlife out of there um and then we have this uh, this this pin this bolt that goes through that slides through that you might have seen from the dismantling video uh, i'm going to lubricate that up and that goes in through the forks don't forget to put your uh, speedo on at the same time i'll go through that in a minute okay giving it a good clean up just uh with some cleaning spray and stuff you know cleaned up the inside of the spokes, the rim, and then uh, inside all of that, as we mentioned before. So may as well clean it while it's off, right? Um, and then we have this uh, bolt right here, this huge pin uh, that we're gonna use right now to fix um, the wheel in. Now remember you have this spacer ring on this one side here. So uh, coming in from the right where the brakes are, the right as you're looking at the front of the bike, then we wanna go in through there. Um, I've just greased it up or oiled it up um, just to give it a bit of whatever. This right here pushes up against the edge right there. Uh, <laughs> it's the mistake that I made here, which is a bit of a terrible one to be honest, um, is that the this spacer ring here, uh, it doesn't go on the outside, it goes on the 
inside. So we pop that in through there, and then obviously we're gonna take this uh, through the, the wheel hub in a second, uh, mount the wheel on and so on. And then we've obviously got to make sure that we place the discs, uh, the disc of the brakes in between those two pads, uh, and then slide it all the way through and go from there. Yeah, all right, this next bit's gonna be difficult to film, so I'll just have to kind of talk you through it. Um, gonna be able to lift up the wheel, make sure it goes between the pads, while you line up uh, the hole through the hub to get the pin through and to get it through the other side, right? So um, kind of a lot going on uh, all at the same time uh, while the forks are trying to reposition themselves and all kinds of stuff. Gotta lift the wheel up into the right position, gotta fit that spacer uh, in there as well. Don't forget this little girl right here um, while you line it up with the other side. So anyway, there it is. Might need another pair of hands for this. Okay, we're to this point where the space has gone in. It's real tight, it's meant to be. Um, and I just need to tap that now with a hammer. It's meant to go through with a hammer, if that wasn't obvious. It's not meant to be a loose fit. Um, what I do need to do though now is to get the speedo on there because the bolt goes through the speedo as well. So do that too. Okay, speedo, I'm gonna drop a little bit of uh, lubricant as well through that, That's where the pin's gonna go through in a second. That'll be tight otherwise. Um, remember you've got this sort of felt uh, washer thing here, and you have this locator that, um, I'm not sure if I'm able to get around there to see this, but hopefully you can see there's a little locator slot there. That'll make sure it goes in the right place. Plus we drive the main pin through that once it's in position. And you might find it really tough to get. You think you can't get that pin uh, and the discs into their brakes and the speedo on and this and all together. The key is in aligning the forks, just grab the forks with two hands, one hand on that side, one, ha whoops. one hand on this and just straighten them up. Just because just the tire's straight doesn't mean the forks are in the same position. So you wanna pull these until that's in place. Then I've just knocked the pin Again with the hammer just through the other side. So it's just poking just through the speedo now and then I'll make sure it's lined up and take it through the rest of the way. Just stick your head next to that ring and see where that pin is moving through to. Um, that's the top of it that you can just about see in there. And then you know that things are lined up as you're banging it with the hammer on the other side. Okay, last couple of bits here. Um, some extra oil on that side and obviously we put it in there too, making sure everything's lined up, hold the thing steady. You can only go as far as the forks on that side, nut on this end now, and get ourselves uh, two sockets, one on each side. More tea and more remembrance of the fact that I support the Chicago Bears. Good morning, back on this uh, Paggio Liberty 50 today, and I left it last time with the wheel about to be tightened up the front wheel. Uh, I've since taken a look at an online one, and now I know that the front wheel nut axle here will take, uh, or needs um, a torque of 45 to 50 on its setting. So I've uh, got my torque wrench here that thankfully I bought years ago, set that to the right settings. So one socket on one end, one on this, and then once you feel, if you haven't used a torque wrench, it just, it's only very subtle, but you'll feel eventually that there's like a little click under, under tension. Here's what I was talking about now. So I'm gonna pull up on this side, push down on the other and have a listen. That click right there is the torque wrench telling me that it's up to the right tension now. Okay, now that that, uh, now that, that wheel is on, I'm doing something different now next, because I'm building from the front of the bike backwards. This is my original one here, petrol gauge wasn't working. This is an older one that I've got that a bunch of other stuff doesn't work on, but the petrol gauge does. All right, not gonna bore you with the details, but long story short, the problem was this resistor on the back. So I did in fact buy this new panel here um, for whatever it cost me. I think I paid 15 pounds for that because I got a good price on it, but it was still 15 quid for the price of a resistor that probably cost 10 P. Um, I probably should have tried to work out what value that resistor had first and um, ordered one of them from RS or something. But there we go, lesson learned. 
nevertheless, I can rebuild this now um, because it's working on there at the moment. All right, coming to the point now that I really don't like. I've started it already, but uh, starting to fix on these panniers and stuff, obviously wheels on everything else, and starting to put this together. Had some faults today with this, but my fuel gauge is working. Then I had issues with some of the lights not coming on, then I found a broken cable in here. So from all the messing around that I'd done to take it all off, one of the cables had broken internally, but that's fixed. So now it's about finding all these <laughs> fiddly points where the screws uh, all come in buried right down inside of there that fix this to the handlebars and then we put the back on and making sure the cables are all rooted in the right places and everything else. Uh, so on that now. Uh, rear wheel change today. You can see the state of mine. It's pretty flipping bad actually. And there is a tendency with these Paggio Liberties, I think all Paggios, even up to modern day, they really don't paint them very well. They do like a single paint uh, coat on them. That one there is what I'm changing it to for obvious reasons. Uh, okay, so to remove the wheel, obviously put it up on your stand, get the wheel off the ground. Uh, this little, this cap here comes off the end. Uh, you then have a split pin that goes uh, through the hole there in the, in the pin that goes through the hub, uh, keep it on obviously. And um, you've got to bend that straight and knock it out. Uh, and then if possible, if, especially if it's an older one, then get a new one to replace it. Uh, then there's this little inner ring here and then you finally find the nut right there. And um, obviously got to stick a socket on there. Uh, pull the back brake up there or somebody else do it uh, while you put pressure on this. Otherwise, all you'll do is turn the wheel. Just get these two undone here, it secures the exhaust. Some people take the exhaust completely out. I have found that I haven't had to do that when I've taken this back wheel off before. Just very carefully move the exhaust just off to the right a little bit and that's enough. Uh, what has been in the past, today may be a different day, but in the past it's been enough for me to just get the, the wheel hub past the brakes there, not forcing anything, just gently bringing it backwards and usually can get it free. Uh, as before, while we're here, let's give this replacement wheel a bit of a clean. It's a little bit dirty here and there. Nothing, no big deal, just a few bugs and a few <laughs> um, cobwebs, but clean it up. Okay, just loosely put the wheel back in place and straight away went to grab for those. Uh, Allen key bolts down there just to secure the exhaust again, don't want that just hanging off the front fixings. And um, here's where we need to get things right again, okay? There's a, should be a washer that goes in first, just inside uh, the wheel there. Uh, wheel nut on first, do it all the way in finger tight first of all, and then get ready with your socket set. And again, go and pull that left hand brake lever there to lock the wheel while you do this up. I'm gonna look up the torque setting on the rear nuts as well. Okay, that rear wheel needs to be tightened to 75 to 85 newtons. Um, torque wrench on there, pull your brake lever. It should be said that your wheel nut um, uh, torque settings may be different to mine. Don't take my numbers as your numbers, okay? For safety, do your own measurements. And I can't film this and pull that up at the same time. I'm gonna pull that up until the torque wrench goes click. Okay, that's done and up to tightness, so. We are going to put this uh, split pin back in, except <laughs> nut cover goes on first, okay? <laughs> oh dear, not doing too well. So once that little nut cover goes on, then we may put the split pin in. There's a better view of how we now bend the, the split pin here long nose pliers or something like that. Wrap it around the inside, but make sure that it's inside of that nut cover, because otherwise uh, this cover won't go on after it. Okay. okay, there we are. You can see now how it would be pretty much impossible for that wheel to fall off, even if the nut underneath was to come off, which, you know, it's like never gonna happen. But if and if it did, you've got this cover, nut cover there, plus the split. In, so it's it's safe to go. And then once you've finally got this, just a little gentle tap there, there's your cover, and we have the nicely replaced wheel. Look at that.
Beautiful. Okay, gonna clean up some of these parts here. Going to be using this. Great stuff, great product. Gunk Ultra, you just spray it on there, leave it for a few minutes. Uh, cuts through grease and grime, you know, and um, then you just rinse it off. Sometimes you need a bit of a brush if it's really deep, sort of thick oil and stuff. Okay, a little bit of before and after. But here's um, the same unit uh, now cleaned up and it's just been rinsed off. So take a look at this. Uh, many of you will know this. It's just like a bumper shine back to black. To this. I've got to put the other rubber strips back in, but that's where we fix it to the bottom of the bike. So that's why those are still missing at the moment. I mean, you can tell the difference clearly. Some of these things are not going to be seen, but this top piece is, and I think let's make it nice. I've already used this actually. I didn't have the foresight to film it before I'd done it. Shame, never mind, but I've just used that on here. Um, it's taken a beat in a bit, but it's coming up just beautifully. So did the inside of it too. Not essential. You got a bike apart, why not do it? You can see it comes up an awful lot better. And once that's dry and clear of all of its um, grease and stuff, and mud, then uh, that will go back on the bike uh, way better. I have also done the bottom of this uh, part as well, which is part of the floor plate. I haven't done the other side of it yet, but just again to show you what kind of muck it, it sort of tends to gather. Of course it does on the bottom of the bike, but um, we can get that up. That, this other side is just black and uh, the gunk remover just sprayed it, left it for two or three minutes and mostly the whole lot came off just with a rinse. I've had to use a little brush there just for these bits because they are thicker with oil and I'm gonna leave a little white spirit on that bit actually, but apart from that, this makes all the diff. Okay, uh, unfortunately run out of the Gunk Ultra uh, before doing the bottom of this. As you can tell, real mess. So I got this other part. I could go and get some more of this obviously, but I don't wanna go out just now. So I've got this stuff as well, uh, Wonder Wipe spray. So I've just sprayed that on there as you can see. And then you take a cloth, as you can see how it starts to come up. Real quick, I might need a little bit of something, a little more heavy duty over there where all the oil is, but there's a more of a light duty cleaner. It'll um, get loads of this kind of stuff right off it, as you see. Okay. Okay, this is where the fun starts, if you want to call it fun. Fitting those three parts to the front pannier here and to the floor. This is quite a little jigsaw puzzle, so I'm going to work all that out now. Underneath first, I believe, because that has these the little bolt clip thingies um, that need to sit underneath because that's going to go through the bottom of the bike, through the bolting on of this part of the front and bolting through the chassis. So it has to slide in under there and we have to align that. And um, the whole thing interlocks in little slots and stuff here in the front. So, okay, that's the floor plate basically in, in position. You need to get this side in first here and just pop this. It takes a bit of flexing, but you get that popping over there. Fits around on the side here, um, underneath those lips, as we've said before, slide it under there, make this up, which I'll do properly in a second. Screws obviously all tighten things up as well. Uh, your accelerator cable should come down through there into that doubler thing. One goes to the oil pump, one goes to the carburetor. They then come up over the top and they sit in this little slot here. You can see that's just been sort of cut out and that sits in there but the brake cable comes down the main shaft here and it ties in in this case next to my electrical loom probably does with yours too um, and squeezes through this area here and out to the back okay so that's the floor part at least that part of it and put the next piece on now okay and put this floor part in next take a note of where we're going to be hooking on 
two here and there and there on each side and then this third one at the front so dropping this in like so and then as we come into the back here where the little pillion these are foot rests just going to push that down a little bit and slide it under there it will also line up this fixing in the back so you'll know you're in the right place there's a little screw hole there so knock down on top like that underneath. and as we come down to the front here we've got to overlap here there's a little slot well kind of just overhangs that part there but while the floor is being fixed into the front there and the whole lot goes together something like that once the screws are all in and so on bolt down through there and, and, and so on so i think we've got to put this part on first actually um and maybe fix into this point first which draws this back perhaps i'll, I'll see what the order is but you can work that out for yourself listen lads and lasses whoever designs these things i do not know and i don't know how they design them it's pretty flipping clever but it can be a nightmare to get these three pieces here to interlock is difficult to say the least and but you can do it one thing i didn't realize was that you can't have the instrument panel connected and fixed if you want to do this i thought that i could nestle it up underneath that and then it would slot in these slots down there in reality you have to have that out to be able to get it into the right position. These are things you've got to look at. I don't know if I can switch a, no I can't. Can't switch a torch on, let me just grab my torch. So we have to, as I've said before, key points here. You need to be able to underlap this floor plate. It needs to line up with its bolts. It needs to have this silver, in my case, floor attached to it at the same time which then has to not only underlap this front pannier, but also has a little slot halfway down there, which the floor needs to connect under a little lip there on the chassis. There are three or four points here where, as you see there, these pieces of plastic interlock, so they have to go a particular way. Then it has to loop all the way up through here. These pieces will join together and underlap. Look at these little, little tabs here as well. Um, which allow the whole thing to underlap. Um, and at the same time as all of that, you got this little release lever here on the inside so that if you press, as you will no doubt know, on your key with the keys in, it will pop this little locker open. So that has to be done as well. And that's the main reason this has to come off as well. You can't get all of that interlocking all at the same time. These have got to line up with the, the little Oh, I don't know what they're called, these things that have the little bolt. These things here. Little chassis bolt female thingies. Okay, so a lot going on there. Now that I've got it all in line, I'll start to pin it together. Probably these first, or maybe the floor first, so that, that can't move. And then it has bolts on the inside of... Where are they? On the inside of the locker here, little screws there. Four in the floor, some on the front here <laughs> and then I can put that back on guys you can do this I believe in you I um, I imagine that there is a very specific order this goes in is probably outlined by the workshop manual but I was um, I was just starting to fix up here at the top thinking work my way down and then I remembered seeing these little overlaps I showed you earlier on that need to be bolted into place before this this foot thing can slide underneath and we bolt through the bottom of that so you can't bolt this in and then do that quite clearly so i've got to do that first i'm sure you'll find a better way than me but you work it out one way or another i've <sighs> got a lot of talking here aren't we all the time but um i'm gonna give you a definitive order now make sure that's detached but not all the way off just to give you this little bit of movement down here you've got this front panny a bit already here um i would fix that into that point first but not fix the floor secondly fit the bolts that were in this corner that I just mentioned that are hidden down under there. You can manipulate this whole floor a little bit just to make space. When you've done that, then you stick the floor bolts in and you stick these uh, 
other screws here that keep this part together and the ones inside of there. I'd say that that is the definitive order. Done. All the screws in. Not got those rubber strips back on yet, but all screws and bolts in. And this thing is feeling rock solid. Putting uh, the instrument panel back on there and everything hooked back up, speedo and so on. So, um, pleased with that right now. Dropped a bit of oil on all the bolts, all the screws as well. Worth doing while you've got the thing apart, is it not? All right, gonna start uh, reconstructing all the plastic housings at the back now, which is uh, this kind of thing, and obviously the fairing at the back and the seat, and so on. So, get on with that now. So, just in sort of reverse order, you need to take off your oil cap and your fuel cap in order to get this on. Carefully sort of push it down it goes over the threads of those things um, until it sort of butts up against here and the fixings here. So you've got one bolt there. I had to replace that with a different one. Couldn't find it, same with that one. Okay. Uh, one right in the back there. Uh, secure your starter relay into there. And then finally, uh, one little screw just that pops right in there, which is an interesting little one because it helps to secure this hose right here. It comes out of your air filter and has a little exhaust thingy there and a little screw in there to connect that up there so it isn't flapping around. Secure the battery in place. Pretty easy, that one. Get the negative on the negative, get the positive on the positive. Have a cup of tea. <laughs> but there is also a little, um, like little breather hose down there. There's a little hose that runs down the side, that runs through a hole, and pops out through the bottom here somewhere or there. Okay, putting some of the final bits back together now. Uh, we'll just put this uh, new faceplate in. I got this on the net because I didn't have one for this bike and it was blue, so uh, uh, spray painted that with some uh, heat resistant multi surface paint. Hopefully, that will hold up. Um, I had to rebuild parts of the plastic inner there to be able to take one of these, uh, you know, one of the metal things that slides over. I don't, still don't know what they're called, so that it could take a screw through there, but that's looking good and nice and tight. Uh, I've just put the lights uh, back in the back here. Uh, again, let me remind you, chuck on a bit of something like this, WD-40 or GT-85 on the contacts uh, before putting it back together while you've got it in bits. You can do that. Um, I'll do exactly the same now with these parts. So I'll uh, spray these connectors up and uh, do the same on the actual light itself so that when they join together, we've got a good uh, contact. We're putting the back I guess pillion handlebar thing, luggage rack thing, back on. A bit annoying that I've lost a part of it. Well, I never had it. This bit here, there's some kind of rubber mat thing that fits in there and I haven't got it, which is annoying. Anyway, three screws in on there. And then there, again, I've painted this as well, just to sharpen it up. So we're getting there. I wanna see what I can do with this rear bumper thing, uh, bump bumper, uh, mud flap here. Just try and uh, spruce it up a bit. A little bit like this thing right here. So take the number plate off and give that some treatment with some uh, Simoners or Simoners, however you call it, bumper and trim shine. And we'll see what that does. 